Welcome to this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Let's roll that intro and get stuck into this week's news. For sure, the absolute biggest news of the week, and it's something that I've received questions about asking for my personal perspectives, my personal take on the matter, and that is Lionel Sanders' world record that he set in at Ironman Arizona just a week ago. And before I get into the race itself in a little bit more detail it down below in the um, Ironman section of this news video and even in more detail in this completely separate video that's up on YouTube already called How the Race Was Won, let me um, unpack just a little bit and put my coach's hat on as far as my perspectives on pushing for world records in Ironman distance races, in long distance races. And although it grabs headline news for the race itself and a bit of headlines as far as the athlete is concerned, what I'm going to be looking at here is, as you know, as triathletes yourself, long distance triathlon is one of the toughest endurance sports that you get around. And at top level, a top professional elite level type racing it's not exactly the type of sport the type of event that allows you to compete week in week out week in week out like say for instance the tennis circuit or the golfing circuit would enable you to do or for that matter the uh, football circuit or should I say for the sake of the um, American friends out there the soccer circuit but then your uh, gridiron circuit as well same type of scenario you simply can't compete every single weekend in long distance triathlon racing and still expect to maintain your top elite level performance because your body simply can't hold up to that amount of punishment without ingesting a huge amount of um, performance enhancing chemicals to be able to help you cope with that type of degree of racing on a week in a week out type of basis. So aside from that you must remember that when it comes to professional sport long distance triathlon is also one of the lowest paying professional sports that you can get out there. Athletes that compete at professional level in long distance triathlon do it not so much for the money but they do it for the love of the sport. And unless you are ab absolutely within the top five internationally, the top five right at the top of the pile of um, long distance triathletes, it will be very difficult for you to be able to make a living from long distance triathlon racing on its own. That is uh, the story, the, the facts of the matter, pure and simple. So with that in mind, let's... I, and. I also have to echo here exactly what Brett Sutton, otherwise known as the doc, had to say about exactly the same situation. is The effort that you need to put in to be able to break a world record is immense. And you, you need to put it in, especially in the professional sense. And that takes so much out of you that after completing the event, you will need a longer recovery time before you come back into racing. And this means that you'll race less, for the, even less for the season, and that means that you'll get fewer paychecks for the season. Just take, for instance, your normal day job, and you've got one project that you need to complete for your normal day job. And your expected time to complete the project, th this project would be, say, five days to complete this project. And the project is worth a fixed amount of money. If you absolutely bury yourself completely, you could potentially bring the project in within a three-day period by cutting back on sleep and pushing yourself absolutely way out. But you still earn the same amount of money whether you completed the project in three days or five days. However, if you completed the project in three days, Imagine if that project had leave you so wiped out emotionally and physically that you wouldn't be able to do 
any further project for another three months. So by completing your project in three days instead of five and earning the same amount of money for that project, you are unable to earn any money for the next three months. However, if you complete the project within a five-day period, you'll be able to complete another project next month and get a paycheck next month. So just weigh this up and compare that to what the pro, pro athletes have to do. In your job, you complete your project two days earlier, but you have you sacrifice three months worth of paychecks to be able to complete that project two days earlier. Or you complete it within the normal period of time and continue earning on a monthly basis. That is the dilemma that pro triathletes have to face when considering whether or not to chase a world record. So that's my take on the matter and as I said I'll unpack the how the races won specifically in a completely separate video. So that's the the beginning of the news for the triathlon week. Let's have a look at Ironman specific and as I mentioned uh, have been mentioning in my intro that the Iron uh, Man world record was broken last week and at Ironman Arizona and while not taking anything away from the immense effort that Lionel Sanders put in to be able to break the Iron Man world record an Iron Man world record in and of itself is somewhat of a contrived idea let's say uh, for instance, in athletics, you get the Diamond League athletics se uh, series of, of the athletics mix. Now, say for instance, the Diamond League had to say that there's a Diamond League world record for the 100 meters that only rec recognizes 100 meters races from Diamond League meets throughout each athletic season and calls their in brand record a world record even if that world record is measurably slower than the actual 100 meters world record. Now bearing in mind here that Lionel clocked 7 hours 44.29 at Ar Ironman Arizona uh, beating uh, the Van Hooliger record that was 7.45.58 and so he beat that record by 1 minute 29 seconds. But bear in mind that um, Lionel's finishing time was still nine minutes slower than the seven hours 35 that Frodeno did in Chandendroth in July. Exactly the same distance, so therefore exactly the same world record as far as a distance is concerned, but Lionel's is called the Ironman world record because it's the fastest time set at any Ironman branded event. It's got nothing to do with the distance whatsoever. Now moving on to Challenge Family News and there's a new event coming up within the Challenge Family for 2017 and looking at the photographs that I've seen of the race venue it looks like an absolutely stunning place to have a half distance triathlon and that's within the city of Prague in the Czech Republic. There was an event called Tri Prague that started in 2015 and is already the biggest road triathlon within the Czech Republic and arguably looking at the scenery around about probably the most scenic road triathlon within the Czech Republic. In 2017 the Tri Prague event is going to be rebranded into to be called Challenge Prague and will happen on the 29th of July 2017 so just in time to be able to head over to Prague and race that event just after watching the Tour de France in 2017 and bearing in mind this will be a half distance event so most of you will be able to manage that then heading on to the world of Xterra and what's happening in the world of Xterra is uh, next weekend on the 4th of December there will be the Xterra Trail Run World Championships and that's going to be over a half uh, half marathon distance out on the trails in in Hawaii and Ryan Hall the current American record holder for the half marathon will be racing that event although Hall insists that he will be nowhere near being the favorite for the um, Xterra Trail Run World Championship because he's been bulking up in the gym since retiring from uh, from running and is now 40 pounds 
heavier than what he was when he set that American record in the half marathon. Then finally, moving on to the world of the ITU. And last weekend was the uh, ITU Cross Triathlon World Championship that took place in Snowy Mountain, uh, Australia. Ruben Rosafa pulled off a three-peat. Uh, Ruben Rosafa of Spain, should I say, pulled off a three-peat, his third victory in a row at the Cross Triathlon World Championships, while Flora Duffy added a third world title of 2017 uh, to her palmares after taking the World Triathlon, ITU's World Triathlon Series title, world title, she took the Xterra world title and now Flora Duffy of Bermuda has added the cross triathlon, ITU's cross triathlon world title to that list as well. And Flora led the race from start to finish in a performance very similar to how she picked up her world title in Maui. However, when you look at the ITU website, the only thing that is taking prominent center stage is not the uh, Cross Triathlon World Championship that happened last weekend. No, 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 no. What's of more importance to the ITU is that the tickets for the event organizer uh, conference that is due to be taking place early in 2017 are now uh, available at a Black Friday discount of 20% absolutely riveting stuff to keeping me on the edge of my seat over and above things that actual athletes are doing in actual events. But speaking about actual athletes doing things in actual events, something else that the ITU has been doing that hasn't featured anywhere on their website whatsoever and it took a tweet that I received from pro triathlete Richard Murray to alert me to, the, to this matter and it looks like the ITU is wanting to change the format of triathlon at the 2020 Olympic Games and the most vocalized option of changing the format from the ITU side is that they want to reduce the distance from the standard Olympic distance to sprint distance for the sake of TV audiences. But as I mentioned this is something that's been uh, discussed with the International Olympic Committee. It's been message, messages have been sent out to the pro triathletes to get their feedback but nothing whatsoever is on the ITU's website. But you, the audience, tell me, what do you think? Um, what, how do you feel about the triathlon at the Tokyo Olympic Games being effectively cut in half from an Olympic distance race to a sprint distance race? Let me know what your feelings on that matter in the comment section down below. Share below what you feel as far as that matter is concerned. That brings me to the end of this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Be sure to like and share this video, post any comments, questions or criticisms that you may have in the comment section down below, including what you think about the reduction in race distance for the 2020 um, Tokyo Olympic Games Triathlon. Then remember that if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button that you can see down there below the screen. And finally, until the two of us meet again, stay carved up for the win. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Coach Ever, but next.